and welcome to the fourth episode of Raiders of the Roundtable. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for tuning in for this uh, this week's episode, uh, the fourth episode in this series. Who knows how long we're going to do this, but we're going to keep doing it for as long as you guys come to listen and for as long as Crypto Raiders is going. Um, we've got a lot to talk about, guys, regarding the Crypto Raiders economy, and that is the subject for today's episode and probably probably the the next couple of episodes because there's a lot to talk about um, and there's a lot going on uh, in developing and changing with the crypto rares economy and I think it uh, I think it just makes sense for us to to tackle uh, the elephant in the room uh, for lack of a better term um, before we get into today's topic I do want to introduce who we have uh, at the table here speaking, uh, Saro, as you guys know, the director of esports for Crypto Rares, Peter, the analyst magician. Uh, we have added officially Merrick Moon to the table. Um, he is a streamer of Crypto Rare content, does interviews of the team. So if you guys are not following him on Twitter or uh, subscribe to his channel uh, on U- on Twitch or YouTube, he's got both. If you're not you know, subscribe to him over there. Make sure you go do that. He's got some great content. And of course, we've got Hell V Gaming, the mastermind behind a lot of strategy regarding Crypto Raider uh, combat, Crypto Raider PVE, PVP, all of that. Uh, we're happy to have all of them on the team. Uh, Merrick, you just want to go ahead and give yourself a quick introduction since um, this is your first uh, first time on the table? Yeah, sure. Um, can y'all hear me? I cannot hear you right now. Testing, testing. I can for sure hear you. You can hear me? Yeah, Langley was trolling you. We can hear you. What's oh, up? Okay. I got to change my audio. <laughs> All right. So, yeah, no, it's awesome to be a part of uh, this roundtable. Um, uh, as Langley said, I stream Crypto Raiders every Friday and um, also do interviews of the team once in a while. And, yeah, just super invested in CR and just want to do as much as possible uh, to let this pop off. Uh, I think it should pop off pretty much. You guys can hear him fine, right? Nothing else. I don't know. Why don't we, why don't we just kind of talk a little bit about what happened in the past week in, uh, crypto raiders. What do you guys think? Uh, we, then not so long ago, we got abilities and, uh, just a couple days ago, there was, uh, an update to a few abilities. How do you guys feel about those kind of changes that we've had so far with some of those abilities? A lot of the changes are really nice. Um, I think Magic Missiles is viable now um, in certain builds. I think there's some play to try to do like a, uh, um, what's it called, Sharp Eyes into Blind into Magic Missiles, uh, just to increase your hit chance as much as possible and try and get that guaranteed crit. Uh, I think that's probably viable. Uh, I haven't been playing a lot of tournaments, but I understand that Sneak has become pretty prevalent with uh, getting spammed in uh, tournaments and uh, frustrating some people, um, which uh, I can totally understand from uh, the way that ability works now. Uh, Ignoring magic armor and all of that uh, seems really nice. It's a good change for that. Uh, Might need to get tuned a little bit, but we'll see what happens with the upcoming uh, changes to defense and everything like that. Um, Other than that, I think the abilities are looking pretty decent. in my opinion, I still think that Battle Cry and Enchant are probably a little bit underwhelming, um, but they're not horribly out of place anymore. Uh, I think they're somewhat reasonable. Uh, probably still not going to be seeing a lot of use over the other abilities, though. Yeah, one, one thing I've been thinking about a little bit is we're supposed to be hitting level 10, I believe, next week, right? So that that's going to give us access to that third ability. So you were talking about being able to combo together like Magic Missiles and Sharp Eyes or something like that. And once we hit uh, once we hit level 10, we might start getting some even wilder combos with those abilities. Yeah, only thing is, uh, once we hit level 10, they need to add a way to increase uh, either through some stat rework or something else, or maybe some class ability, some way to have a bigger energy pool. Because two abilities is kind of what the energy pool is designed around. It's not really designed around three, so comboing three isn't really something you could do with 50 energy. Unless you're using two fifteen costs, I guess. Yeah, there are a few uh, fifty energy combos you can do. One that I was thinking about is um, what is it? You go, 
it's the one in the bottom right corner. What's that one called? It gives you two crits. It gives you two guaranteed crits on your next two, uh, couple attacks. You can no, cast that just, one first. That's uh, sharp eyes. It just gives you increased damage on your next two crits and increased hit chance. Yeah, yeah. So there, so there you go. That that one gives you the increased damage on the crit ch chance, and it stacks it so it doesn't go away after a couple turns. So you can lead with that one, and then you can go battle cry. And I I forget what the third one is, but there's a, a third 15 energy spell you can do. So it's yeah, a 45 energy hands. combo. Or enchant. Yeah, enchant. Yeah, yeah. So you can do that, and then you can hit them with the bash, and potentially just one shot with that combo. Yeah, it's viable. What, uh, what do you be guys, really cool. Oh, what sorry. Go guys, ahead. Go ahead, Mer. Oh, no worries. Yeah. What do you guys think when they add like class talents, like the talent tree, um, and like the abilities that we currently have? Do you think they'll like shape them off thematically, or every class will have access to these abilities forever? Because, you know, Magic Missiles is very, like, wizard-like, or, like, you know, Draining Strike is very rogue or warrior-like. Do you think they'll basically, like, branch those off, or every class will have access to those talents forever, those abilities forever? I feel like, so I got my microphone and audio fixed. Um, so to answer that question, I think uh, the team is going where each class will have specific abilities, but there will be, like, o like, like overall classes like uh, Sneak and Enchant and Magic Armor uh, and Magic Missiles, but there will be specific class abilities that, that they are, I think, developing. At least that's what I've seen in, like, the, the leaks that they've dropped. Um, don't quote me on that. I, I don't know 100%, but that, that just kind of seems like how they're going with that. Yeah, I agree. I think they're going to keep the nine abilities that we have currently as uh, basic abilities for any class to use and then introduce additional ones in the class talent trees. All right, so before, so I realized what yeah. I what I, my issue was I didn't have my headphones on. That's why I couldn't hear anything on. So um, oh. super simple fix. Just got to turn them on. Um, all right, so let's just jump into uh, the economy real quick, guys. Let's, let's talk about this because there's a lot that we could talk about here. Um, and I want to make sure we have enough time to, uh, to talk about uh, priorities for Unity Port at the end of this. So kind of a brainstorming session for that, if you will. Um, so I'm going to just pose this question to the table, um, bring your thoughts to, to, uh, to the table and uh, let us know what you think when we get to a, a question that you want to talk about, guys. Um, uh, table is yours whenever you want to talk. Uh, just raise your hand and we can move forward, okay? Um, so this past week, uh, Kix announced, or well, the team announced a huge development um, update regarding generation, early generation value increases. Uh, generation 1 going from 30% to 100%, generation 2 is going from 25% to 80%, and this is for or Orum bonuses when selling to Laz. Um, so they're looking at these early generations and giving them value as a way to, I think, um, balance out the, or, or uh, Kix actually said this himself uh, in Council of the Elders, as a way to balance out the the current floor price of generation six, uh, five, four, three, right? Um, what do you guys, what are your thoughts? What are your early thoughts on this? When, what, when you first read this, what did you think? Let's just go there. What were your first reactions? The Deegis is laughing over there. He's crying over there. Deegis, you gonna come to the table? Are you gonna talk? Uh, anyone else? Anyone else? You guys can. Uh, you guys can uh, let us know what you think. I want. I want to hear Helvi's impression first. I don't know. I want to hear <laughs> what Helvi has to say because he's such a power user. Helvi, what thoughts? Thoughts? Tell us. Well. I'll give my thoughts real quick uh, if I'll start it off. Okay. Um, this, as soon as I saw this announcement, the first thing I did is I went to OpenSea to see if I could afford a Generation 1 Raider. Because uh, as soon as I saw this, I was like, oh man, gener the, the value of Generation 1s, 2s, 3s is going to go up like real fast. And it did. Uh, unfortunately, I didn't buy any um, because I didn't have any liquid at the time. But I wanted to, right? Uh, so in terms of the goal of the update, I think they nailed it. Uh, I think... You know, as we get deeper into uh, more dungeons and higher level items, you know, that are going to sell for even more Aurum, uh, those earlier generations are really, they're really now going to hold a lot of value. Um, whereas beforehand, I, I honestly didn't think generation ones or twos didn't hold that much value. Um, other than, especially rare, especially rares. Uh, like I, I still think rares are a little overvalued just because, um, you know, I want to, spend my liquid on something or more raiders than just one specific personally but uh, but i think they nailed it in terms of increasing the value of those earlier generations 
but uh, I mean, it, it's still, we, we, you know, we can't, we're not going to know 100% until it's actually in action, which hopefully I believe is this week. Um, I think that's when it's going to start. But um, the, the question begs to be asked, you know, with, with uh, these generation, early, these early generations values been, being increased, are we ever going to see dungeon, uh, uh, orum drops in dungeon? Like, is that a when or is that a never? Like, that, that's a question that I'd love to have answered. I don't know if anyone has that answer, but um, uh, I'm getting a feeling that it's a never, but I'm not sure, honestly. Uh, Helvi, go ahead. All right, sorry for for a second there. My phone wouldn't let me out mute. Um, but yeah, I don't think uh, there's ever going to be uh, orum drops in dungeons unless you get like a situation where um, where crafting is just super popular and super profitable for people, and you end up with a problem where orum is spiking in price like crazy. Uh, then you might run into a situation where just increasing the price that Lazlo pay isn't enough. And they might temporarily do it, or they might do some kind of special event or something, some special dungeon that drops it as a one-time, you know, limited two- or three-week thing just to control the price of Orum. But that'd be the only thing I could ever see happening, and it wouldn't be anytime soon. It would just be when there's a crazy spike in user base. Um, but as to the earlier question of uh, the recent announcement, uh, I think it's really, really good to have the change in the... Um, earning potential of different generations. I think it was sorely lacking before at 30%. Uh, they're just, it was always an open question until we got Laz, and then we found out how much it actually pays, and you're just like, well, 30% really isn't that big of a deal. And we kind of saw the floor falling apart on Gen 1s as a result, and Gen 2s and Gen 3s, and now it's kind of recovered a little bit. Uh, it's still not all the way there. But it is uh, recovering a bit, which is nice to see. I certainly bought up, uh, I bought 50 characters pretty soon after that announcement between Gen 1, 2, 3, and 4 uh, to use as my actual rating characters moving forward. So I, I grabbed up a few. I think they're a good value right now with how much they can uh, make RYYs in the future. Um, or even right now if you have them level 9, especially as we move to that battle pass. And I think that battle pass is also very, very nice change, uh, in my opinion, both for having uh, extra utility for Raider token and for having uh, daily runs instead of weekly. I think it's a good change, and hopefully they don't cave to the people that want it to stack like 10 times or something crazy or stack for the full week, and they keep it to you know maybe a maximum of three times, so that way it kind of forces that choice between... Um, running dungeons consistently or questing consistently instead of all characters doing both uh, at max efficiency. So that's kind of what I'm hoping for there. Um, but yeah, that's uh, kind of my thoughts on it. Yeah, I will say the introduction of the battle pass is um, was definitely unexpected. Um, and I just want to make sure you all know and understand this fact that, you know, while I, I, I am employed by Crypto Raiders, I am very much still a community member that is like all of you. Uh, I know a few details, um, but I'm, I'm very much in the dark. I'm not privy to any kind of, you know, speculation on, on drops or rewards or any of that. Um, I, I'm just a content creator that that leads their 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 streaming and and whatnot. So you know the things I say, don't quote me on them because I'm just as much speculating as all of you because I don't know anything. Um, and I just want to make sure you guys are clear on that. Um, that yeah, I, I'm I'm paid by them, but I don't know anything. All right, I, I'm, I create the content and I love the game and I do what I do because uh, I, I want this game to succeed. That is what I've always been about. So I just wanted to make sure I, I kind of voice that so you guys are all uh, just understanding of, of my vantage point, all right? Um, but, uh, you know, with that said, um, let's, I mean, the battle pack. Well, Merrick, I'm going to, did you have anything you wanted to throw into that after after Helvi's thoughts? Uh, yeah, um, it's, I think, well, the battle pass is quite interesting. I want to see how that plays out. The whole idea about, like, Orm rewards for early gen it's just tricky because I just I want to see I just won't, I, I don't know I think dialing the reward number uh, is going to be interesting well let's see what this 100% 80% 60% does 
um, for the Orem token. Um, but I just want to see how hard it would crash in relation to how high the rewards are or like how low the rewards are. Like, I, I just want to see this not be tested more. So I think this was a very good step. Um, so I'm just looking forward to that. And the battle pass, I, I'm personally, I don't know. I, I'm excited about the battle pass. If uh, Laz does what he's supposed to do like well, and as for like the cosmetic side, I don't know if we want to get into that. Cosmetic and MMORPGs gets tricky. So it coming from the battle pass as a thing, it's not, it's not like Fortnite, you know, where cosmetics and MMORPGs, the relationship between those two and uh, something like a battle royale is very different or like League of Legends and skins. So I don't know. I'm waiting to see how that rolls out, but I'm reserving my opinion on that. Yeah, that's now. actually that's a really good point because um, I don't know if you've played Black Desert online, but you know they they sell skins <laughs> left and right. That. Like uh, I've spent oh, money yeah. on skins in Black Desert online. I'm ashamed to say, but um, yeah, like when you wear gear, like in like in World of Warcraft or whatnot, when you put armor on, you your your image changes, right? And I think that that yeah. that in and of itself is just an awesome mechanic of the game. And yeah, I don't know yeah. how are cosmetics going to be introduced. Because you know, this is the thing, right? Like when people say, oh, he's got Lightbringer. Oh, he's got the Katana, you know, from the new dungeon. Like when, when you see those weapons, it's because you know where they came from. Mm -hmm. And it makes them more special. So if it just comes from not really an achievement in the game, this is where it could get very like tricky. The thing is, I like the... It, it doesn't have to tie to difficulty. Like I'm not saying the the coolest items have to come from difficulty. Like like you see the uh, the events, right? Like the Christmas event, the Valentine's Day event. That's cool. You know, it's like a limited time thing. You get it, you get it. You don't, you don't. Um, and it, you can still marvel at the cosmetic, but it's still something you earn in game. So the battle pass cosmetic system. I'm just I wonder how that how they want to implement that. So yeah, that's 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 my worry. So I'm like reserved because I don't know exactly how they're gonna roll it out. But when I hear battle pass cosmetics, my spidey senses tingle just a little bit. It's <laughs> a great point, Helvy. Yeah, I just wanted to uh, comment before we get too far away from it on the uh, worry there about um, Orum crashing from increasing the rewards of uh, lower gens. Uh, that Merrick kind of touched on a little bit. And it's something that a lot of people who aren't super heavy into the DeFi side of things don't always uh, consider, is Orm does have a bit of a control on the downward side of things. And the fact that if Orm crashes too hard, the APR on the Orm pools become insane for providing liquidity. And people will buy up Orm just to stake it for liquidity pools. And uh, kind of control the downward pressure to an extent. Obviously, that only works so long until it breaks, and then, and then you have a complete collapse if uh, people start pulling out because they've lost uh, confidence in the project. But uh, that's an extreme case, and generally, you're going to have a bit of control. So Orem can't go too crazy down uh, really quickly. So it'll have plenty of time to respond if it's causing any kind of negative selling pressure. That's a good point. And I know during this past week's Council of Elder Elders um kicks mentioned, you know, sinks coming into play and, and just sinks that for for Orum, I mean, um and, and installing the correct sinks, not just installing a sink just for the sake of spending Orum, but you know, sinks that just make sense for the game. And I think that that is gonna come into play. And I mean it, that might this entire upgrade might be coming with a new sink that we don't even know about, right? Uh and that would be smart if they do that. Right. Um, and so I, mean, I think I think, you know, the entire market is down right now. You know, everyone in the tokens discussions talk about Bitcoin, you know, all the, the conversations regarding just cryptocurrency in general, you know, all of that going. I mean, NFTs are dropping in price, except for a few projects. But, you know, in my in my opinion, I think we've got a great team here that, um, you know, they're, they have recognized the issues uh, regarding economy. You know, obviously they, they have eyes, you know, 
looking at Axie Infinity, Peg Axie, all these other games that yet yeah, their you know tokenomics is just not strong. And instead of instead of dropping Orum in dungeons, they realize that if they do that, it's gonna kill their economy, right? And so I think that's why they went to the the loot uh, selling you know way instead of dropping Orum. Um, does Unity Port save Orum spending? Uh, like I mean, does Unity Port just open so many doors that you know Orum spending and the value of Orum and 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 Raider token like just skyrockets? Like, is, is that something we can expect from Unity? Well, I, I I think one thing is like you're talking about the skyrocketing of Orum, but I think it's been said multiple times. I feel like they don't want Orum to be too expensive. I believe I heard once that like two cents was like the goal for what Orum should be. So like that, that that isn't exactly an ideal situation because if if Orum starts skyrocketing, then it becomes really difficult for players to come in to be able to buy a raider and to level it up and to be able to participate in duels or to be able to just like do dungeons and stuff. So I I don't know if you you entirely want that. Well, that's a good point. Well, what's a, yeah. What do you think is a good price for for Orum? You think two cents? I was thinking five personally, but I mean, I don't know. I I, I don't. I feel like what a key is twenty five. So if it's if it's five cents, like buying a single key becomes really expensive all of a sudden. I don't think you want something like that to be so crazy. I, I know I've heard like two cents. I was pretty happy with it at around like three and a half cents. I thought it's fine at three cents. I, like right now, I think it's closer to two and a half. See, it still seems to me it seems fine. I, yeah. I don't really know like the exact amount. I think anywhere between two and three cents is great because uh, it controls also the price of recruiting which is very important for the floor price. Because if Orum goes too high, the floor kind of has to jump up on the price of characters as well yeah. uh, as a result of Orm being higher. And, you just... and uh, if it moves too low, that's another downward uh, stopper for Orm. If Orm starts to move too low, like if it got down to one and a half cents, everybody would just recruit mm -hmm. because it would be so cheap. So, uh... Yeah. I always liken crypto readers to another country. So I think the crypto readers team is like building literally in another country where they're trying to get people to uh, come into the country and then play and then trade. So naturally, they'll, you'll expect the cost to entry to be lower. And uh, and then also note that in terms of things, I think uh, you know, in order to make a country interesting, the crypto readers team will put out all these interesting mechanics like cosmetics and things like that uh, and slowly you will start to see a trading economy like where people are just literally trading uh, items or uh, they're spending on a lot of things like potions and things like that uh, I think that's when you will start to see uh, a lot of own expenditure uh, yeah so what I'm saying is that you know Rome isn't built in the day it's going to be built across a long timeline so naturally at this point of time it's still quite early and it's we only have a few things so when we have more things that's going to be uh, very interesting for us and it's going to be beneficial for everyone here so I think it's good to look at the long timeline and crypto videos to me is just like another country that we're trying to build here yeah and to echo that um uh, regarding this this is the thing for me like what price should orm be it's doesn't that so so echoing the the sinks the the orm sinks like if we have more orm sinks but then also if the orm rewards are really good uh will it hurt for orm to be like five cents ten cents or even 25 cents depending on what's coming back in that that that's what i'm trying to think uh, about like if if what's coming back to you is very high and very frequent um, maybe not as frequent because then it won't work but if it is high um, then is doesn't it make sense for that price to be higher like and and not feel crazy like for 25 cents not to be crazy if the value of everything steadily goes up we're I talking the raiders we're talking the token everything I think yeah, the answer to that is that the team has already w always wanted a, a low entry point. And if, mm -hmm. if everything's going up and everything's going up, well, Raider price is going to, or the Raider characters themselves is going to go up. 
So, I mean, we've already seen in chat people complaining about a $60 Raider, Raider price. I'm like, come on, man. Really? Um, yeah. We, we won't even get into that. But, um, yeah. yeah, I think that... People I, are paying $100 it, for, like, pre-order yeah. DLC. <laughs> yeah. Like, I, I mean... Yeah. But the team has always, always said they wanted a cheap entry price, and if it goes to $0.25 yeah. cents for Orem or whatever, some crazy number, then it, the, the entry the entry is just going to be too high, you know, uh, for, mm-hmm. for new people, especially new crypto gamers, right? Langley, actually, since you've played uh, Axie, what do you, I remember the token was at, like, uh, the SLP was at $0.25 cents at one mm-hmm. point, right? Mm-hmm. Like, what, what do you think about that? Like, yeah. Can I chime in? Uh, yeah, yeah, go ahead, the, Sarah. When, when I actually hit that, like, really high price for their token, that, like, wasn't necessarily a good thing for their game, I don't think, because, like, you look at the chart, they hit that, and then they just came crashing down. And have, like, they've never been able to recover. I, I don't think that was, ne- that, like, insane hype boom-bust cycle, I don't think was good for their, their game. No, I don't know. Interesting. No, not at all. Um it was horrible for them, actually. It was the worst case scenario because it crashed their servers and then you had so many people who invested thousands of dollars and now they can't even play the game because the servers are crashed. So it, it just, it, it really started the fire, honestly. Uh, and that's why I'm, I'm excited. I'm excited how Crypto Rares is doing it. Like, yeah, we're we're eight months into development or whatever, right? And, you know, we've got a playable game. Sure, or earnings isn't where we would like it, but that's because they are thinking long-term where a lot of people think short-term right um we have to think long term as a community um in order to support this community the right way to support the game the right way uh, and i think that's something that's really hard to get across to people in the in the degen world of crypto uh, and nfts right uh Helby, go ahead yeah i just wanted to uh i think it would be good uh, i don't necessarily agree with what i'm about to uh push out but i just wanted to play devil's advocate for a second here <laughs> for the people for the people that are uh, complaining about the uh, $60 entry price, um, just to kind of play devil at, devil's advocate, it's not really a $60 entry price because the game is being built and has been built kind of from the beginning around having multiple characters. Uh, you can't really run a whole lot uh, with only one. You're not. You're, it's very clear that you're not meant to play the game with one character right now. Uh, it's not uh, kind of how it's at least so far been designed maybe it'll change in the future as more things come out and active skilling and things like that happen but right now you probably want at least five maybe ten characters so you're looking at three to six hundred dollar entry price and then you also want to have some raider token stake uh to get in on airdrops and things like that so that's another two to four hundred dollars so you're looking at a thousand dollar entry price right now not sixty dollars That's a very good point. Um, and I think we've all gotten to that. Like, for me, I bought one Raider, played with my five Raids, and I was like, well, that's it. Crap. I got to wait till next week. Um, so I went and bought more Raiders, right? So I think that's a good point that the entry price of 60 bucks really isn't the entry price. Um, I do want to say one more thing in regards to Axie Infinity. Um, uh, the increasing price of SLP caused the team for Axie Infinity having to, they had to adjust the breeding prices because the price just kept going up and up and up and up. And soon it was like 200 bucks to breed one time and you maybe get a little profit, right? Um, and they had to do this. Like as the price of SLP was dropping, they had to adjust and it kept dropping and they had to adjust. And it just, it seemed like every other week they were doing adjustments or every other two weeks they were doing adjustments. And that's energy wasted. Like that's energy wasted by the development team um you know for the community and I, I, we don't want crypto raiders to do that you know we don't want them wasting energy on trying to make sure the economy is stable i think matt has honestly killed it in terms of keeping this the economy stable um and yeah i, I think if it goes over five five cents we'll, we'll definitely be in trouble um but i don't think it ever will i don't think Orum will ever go over that uh sarah you wanted to say something there or no okay I, uh, I lost my train of thought on what I was go- going with. Okay, all right, no problem. Yeah, if Orum, if Orum gets too high, people will just sell gear and sell Orum, and Orum will yeah. come back down. If the earnings get ridiculous from just running dungeons, because the other control that you have on Orum is the upwards control, it cannot get too expensive, because if Orum reaches the point where the... Um, uh, where it's more profitable significantly to run characters, everybody who has their characters questing 
we'll just pull them back. Uh, I've got 600 characters out questing. If I can run those in dungeons, in very early game dungeons, without investing a bunch of keys and make significant profits, then that's exactly what I'll do. And there will be a lot more Orem being sold and being extracted, and that'll bring the price of Orem back down. So it can't get over, you know, four and a half to six cents area at the absolute top. And I think it's actually very important that Laz doesn't replace, and I think I've said this before, doesn't replace the auction house. I think that's going to be very important. I feel like even though I'm saying uh, things regarding Orm rewards and game and all that, I think it always just comes back to the auction house. And even though we did get an increase with Laz, I, I kind of think... I, I just want them to put out the auction house as soon as possible so people... I think it'll rest this idea of like play and earn in people's minds. Uh, regarding like, oh, why am I not earning? Why am I not earning? I think putting that gear marketplace in the game is going to be a big point because then I th I think it'll it'll turn a l like it'll shut a lot of people up that are just like, where are my short term, uh, you know, whatevers? And I think it's just a critical part of the game. It's not even just the short term income solution. It's just a long term economical like, you know, people trading amongst each other. And I think that's going to be very very good for like oh what what is this why why does Laz only want 500 warm for this epic i feel like this epic is worth more than that i think the auction house is really the savior for that like if you believe you know a light bringer is worth 30,000 warm or 100,000 warm because that's how many keys you spent to get it then put it up on the auction house for 100,000 warm and if someone it has major major bad rng and would have to spend double the amount of keys of that 100,000 orm to get Lightbringer or whatever the leggy is, then, um, then yeah, like the auction house is there and it's like, okay, I'm, I save money by buying it from the auction house. Yeah, I think you nailed it. I think you nailed it, Merrick. The auction house is honestly probably the savior um, because, yeah, like, but that's a, that's way that's the way it was in MMORPG, or that's how it is in MMORPGs, is where the NPC usually sells or buys it for cheaper and, um, or you can sell for more in the auction house. I mean, in World of Warcraft, that was the thing, right? And yeah, I, I agree 100% that that is definitely the savior of play and earn, uh, you know, uh, for this game at least. Um, and the sooner they get that out, the better. But I mean, you know, we all heard count, uh, we all heard Nick in this past week that, you know, they want to get Unity Port out, Unity Port out, and then the NFT gears. I mean, that's just, I think, I guess it's just pretty hard for them developing that. I don't know. I'm not a coder or anything like that. But, um, yeah, I agree. Auction House is really yeah. important. Yeah, I would say that uh, Laz basically fills the same role for anybody who played old school RuneScape as High Alchemy does. He's, he sets the floor price. That's his purpose. Interesting. All right, so let's, uh, let's move on in the conversation here to the Battle Pass. We've talked a little bit about the Battle Pass um cosmetics you know what that means for the uh for the battle pass um but one of the significant things for the battle pass guys is the amount of raids you're gonna get when you buy the battle pass like uh, i don't know if you guys have done the math but it's 21 raids per week with the battle pass compared to seven per week without it like that's a huge that's a huge change right uh and especially if you've got a gen one raider or high or well not lower but a Gen One or Gen Two Raider, um, I mean, you can if you're running if you're running 21 raids uh, of Awakened, and you're getting a you know a level 12 or level 24 item like maybe I don't know two times out of those 21 raids per week. Um, I'm not I'm not gonna try and hit that math, but you're you're hitting some pretty good Orm earnings. Um, what are your initial thoughts, guys, on Battle Pass? Are you going to also, just so those who are listening, um, the Battle Pass only applies to one Raider. So if you want to, if you want the Battle Pass to be, uh, to be associated with multiple Raiders, you've got to buy multiple uh, Battle Passes. Also, they are planning to have the Battle Pass cost Raider tokens. Um, they have not decided a certain amount. We don't know what that number is going to be, but it is going to cost Raider tokens. So that may, you know, put some, some pressure on the Raider token. Um, but yeah, let me get your thought, your guys' thoughts on, on the battle pass in, in that regard to the effect on the game. Uh, you want to go ahead first, Selby, or 
Oh, you. sure. Yeah. It's just very quick before, uh, before you get into yours is, uh, I absolutely love it. I've already bought 500 Raider tokens and set them to the side so I can battle pass all the characters I just bought. So that's my thoughts on it. It's, uh, I, I really like it. I obviously, I can't say no to more raids. Like that's just more runs, more tries. Um, that's obviously awesome. My only thing is, um, will that diminish the rarity of, you know, epics and legendaries? Like, my my whole spiel is, like, because I'm very divided, right? Because there's the PvP side of things, where I want competitive gear, so I stand a chance in tournaments and, like, be have a chance to place third, uh, second, or first place. Um, but then there's the other side of me that's, like, uh, and this is, I had that discussion with uh, Centurion. I had that interview with Centurion, and he, we were talking about this. And he said, well, if everybody has competitive gear, then it's not competitive, uh, or something along that lines, uh, along those lines. So there's that side. But then there's also the side of like a legendary should, should still feel like a legendary. Like I'm checking on uh, Crypto Raiders Guru right now. And I'm sorting by rarest, like what percentage of raiders have this item. Um, so like I'm looking at spectral whip, it's less than 0.1%, or uh, spectral katana, less than 0.1%, or even something like Lightbringer, 0.3% of raiders have Lightbringer. Um, so my my dilemma there is like, will we see with the battle pass that 0.3 jump to 5%? Because for me, it's like all about the, you know, keeping the balance, and that's super, super hard. And I'm not saying it's easy, or I have the answer to that, but just like what clearly could knock it off the edge, and like tip the balance, basically. So like for me, Lightbringer or a legendary, if I look at Guru and it says five percent, then that kind of hurts. Like I feel like it should, should still be in that three, two percent category. Point three, I think, is a little too low. So I think the battle pass could help with that. But yeah, point three, I think. Anyway, I think I got my point across. But <laughs> keeping, I'm, I'm basically torn with the battle pass. Because one part of me really loves it. But another part of me is, again, cautiously worried. Yeah, so uh, I'm completely on the opposite end of the spectrum from you. Um, <laughs> so, <laughs> literal complete opposite end. Um, I think that uh, the end goal for PvP is for it to be skill-based, and it cannot be skill-based if the primary way you win is by grinding with thousands of dollars. Uh, that is not skill-based. That is a competition of who has the larger credit card. Yes. That, that is literally all it this. is. Finish and uh, that, that is not fun for anybody in the too. long term. It works right now because it's, you know, it's rewarding the people that have spent a lot of money on the game, and it's allowing the economy to function, so I think it's necessary. I think it's very good that tournaments exist right now to reward those that have spent very heavily and allow them to kind of claw back to close to even or even make a small profit. Um, people always talk about how there's such an insane amount going out to tournaments. It's not It's not a lot. If, you're, if you've ever spent enough keys to get competitive gear, you know that the amount going out to tournaments isn't a crazy amount at all. It's, it's not that much, really. Uh, it just lets you get close to breaking even. Uh, I'm personally down heavily on it, but uh, that's just me. <laughs> no, very, but... very true. I agree, I agree with that a lot, um, especially the last part. The only thing, and this is why I bring it up, is because unlike League of Legends or, uh, you know, basically Fortnite, anything where you just pop in and it's just your skill and versus other players' skill, that totally makes sense. But... The, and this is why it's tricky for MMORPGs. Like, the idea of when MMORPGs became PvP, like, that element of gear being thrown into the mix is just this weird, you know, it's this Pandora's box that was open and you just don't know how to close it because gear should matter. Um, so even if you bring skill into the game, like, MMORPGs are naturally gear-dependent. So how do you like? And I'm and I'm bringing this from like WoW and uh, RuneScape and stuff like that. Like if you have top gear, doesn't matter if your opponent has average gear but amazing skill, he's still gonna get wrecked because you have top gear, and that's problematic. I get that. But if you and currently this is what the situation is in WoW PvP, if you both have roughly the same gear, 
then it becomes about skill like who's the better priest who's the better mage but that element of like i have to grind my elite set or have to go get my mythic set to like totally trump a challenger uh, gear level person or uh, a normal heroic uh, raider you know that that and mmorpgs are fundamentally like kind of symbiotic they kind of live together so uh, and and i'm wondering right because this is new territory because we're actually you know there's money involved and you could you can run as many times to get the best gear there's no raid lockout in a sense um unless you count like the freeze as a raid lockout like the free runs so so it's this is tricky territory because it's an mmorpg um in a sense but but that's where i'm coming from right like i i know what you're saying and i agree with that like who's got the biggest wallet but it's kind of like uh the bait uh, the bed that you kind of laid out for yourself when you decide to be an mmorpg because gear does fundamentally matter um regardless of pv or pvp because it's one of them it's it's basically the top fulfilling prize at the end of the you know rainbow or end of the finish line so so it's tricky uh, all i'm saying is tricky i completely agree with you and i do believe skill based is where it's at but gear is kind of still uh piggybacking off of that so how we're going to make that work or how the team is going to make that work is beyond me because it's, yeah. it's going to be tricky yeah and i think um i think you're becoming more common as a result of people having more free raids is ultimately a good thing because especially as they add more gear slots uh, like once every single slot has a legendary piece that you could potentially get, like that is a lot of grinding. And uh, I still think finding people that are able to reach completely full gear will still be extremely rare. But I think individual pieces will be more common. Like it might be 10% of people have, you know, a legendary weapon, but don't have any other slot. And it might be just the 0.3% that have every single slot filled out. Instead of right now, the only thing is a weapon, so it's only 0.3%. But as we get more raids, people will be able to farm out more, and each individual item might be held by 5 or 10% of raiders. But uh, as a collective, having every slot filled out would be super, super rare still. So I think that's kind of where it uh, ends up. Peter, I kind of want to put you on the table, uh, on the spot real quick. Um, uh, if you can... Maybe give us your opinion. What, what since you're kind of like the crypto data analyst, the numbers guy, uh, what's your what's your opinion on rarity and and what percent legendary should drop if you can? Uh, I don't have the numbers on that. I I don't think I've ventured into that topic before because uh yeah, firstly it's not available on chain and I and I don't know how that was calculated for the the drop within the in game data so yeah I don't think I'm the right person to ask regarding that. Um, something I'd want to try in is if you look at like so it's, you were talking about how MMORPGs have a uh, this thing with gear, but that's not exactly exclusive to MMORPGs. If you look at a uh, at card games, you'll see the same thing where players will need a play set of mythic rares. They'll need a play set of rares in their deck and to build the, the correct composition for what they're looking for. So I think the, the real I, I, ideal thing is you want to be able to have a, a variety of different builds that people can do that are all viable. Some have a cheaper entry point, maybe they use uncommon and rare gear, and others might have a more expensive entry point that might be a couple of uh, mythic pieces of gear, or, or legendary pieces of gear rather, that uh, you need like two or three of these for this build to be viable. I think as long as you have a variety of uh, decent builds, that, that I think that's the ideal situation you want to go for. Um, I also saw Lord D wanted to say something earlier. I don't know if he still does, but yeah, I just saw that he had requested uh, Lord D. You want to take this the, the table? The table is yours. Do you have anything to add? Maybe, maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, you're uh, muted. You have to unmute. Yeah, you have to unmute yourself. Yeah. Well, maybe he'll uh, he'll All raise right, his well, hand. While we're waiting, uh, while we're waiting to see if uh, uh, he's got a uh, question. Um, Atrix has a question in the uh, Discord that he pinged us on. 
uh, asking if we were concerned about people spending less on keys as a result of the auction house uh, existing. And uh, I think that's somewhat of a viable concern. Um, the idea being that people would just buy the gear off of the auction house uh, instead of uh, farming for it. Uh, and I'm sure some people will absolutely do that. But uh, the ultimate uh, end point of that is the gear still has to be farmed by somebody. Yeah. Uh, so if people are buying it off of the auction house, there will be other people that are farming even more heavily so they can sell it on the auction house. Exactly. Um, the only thing is, is you kind of get forced into a role as game developers then. Um, I, the team will kind of be forced into where they kind of have to continuously power creep their gear. Um in order to have new stuff coming out and stop it from being over farmed otherwise things like uh like if the auction house was out right now for example raging tempest being the best uh, item in the game it would get farmed out very very heavily eventually by people looking to make a profit selling it on the auction house and eventually we'd reach a point where it was worth very little on the auction house and kind of everybody was able to get one so they have to keep coming out with new dungeons keep power creeping the gear in order to keep having something new that hasn't been farmed out yet, uh, being the primary focus of people who are farming, in order to keep the economy healthy and the spending uh, flowing. Yeah, that's a great point. I, I didn't even think about power creep, um, you know, playing a factor. Um, you know, obviously with the auction house, they would take cuts, you know, percentage cuts, and maybe percent of that orm cut goes to, you know, raider stakers and all that. Um you know, I think also like to that end about the gear, maybe, maybe you have to repair gear. Um, and, uh, and, and while there's a lot of gear out there, maybe the gear breaks at some point, you know, maybe they, maybe they give it a shelf life. Uh, if that, you know, that's obviously a, an option. Um, but we won't know until auction house comes out and when that actually gets installed, we don't even know that. Um, but hopefully soon. Gear repair could actually be, sorry, that I just, you said such a cool thing about, um, gear repair like that could be that could be a good little minor sink as well just gear repair like you have durability and then like i know some people well there's people that really don't like that but it's still part of the fantasy um yeah 100 percent. so that yeah that could be that could be really just like another just it's all about stacking it's like if you have 10 of these type of minor gold sinks like you're you're great so this the, that would be really that would be a good, great addition. Yeah, I'd hate to rush the team to get the sinks out, but man, getting the sinks out would really help. Um, but I know they're gonna do it when it's right and when it's perfect. Um, but man, I, I pray for it every day. <laughs> um, let's see, where do we want to go next? We have 10 minutes, about nine minutes left. I think it's a perfect time to transition to um, priorities after Unity Port, all right? Uh, and what we mean here, guys, is, you know, what developments do we believe the team should, um, you know, work on first? Uh, the team, you know, if you guys didn't listen to this past Council of Elders, go back and listen to it, but... But Nick was mentioning a whole bunch of things that he wanted to talk, you know, develop, and he had all these ideas, right? Um, and, and, uh, and I, I think, yes, ideas are great, but the team is already, you know, is small. Uh, and I think as a community, you know, we probably have a strong voice in, in where they go next once unity port drops, because as he's mentioned, unity port is going to open up a lot of doors. Um, and so I'm going to, you know, open to the, open it to the table. You know, there's some, I'll, I'll throw out these ideas already, uh, fishing, uh, guilds expanded human versus human PVP. Uh, match made rankings uh, for PvP leaderboards, all that good stuff, and auction house, peer to peer trading, the overworld. Uh, these are all ideas that have been thrown out there that that are being worked on that the team has mentioned. So, what do you guys think is is first on your list of priority for the team to work on once Unity Port drops? For me, the most important thing is going to be that true PvP. Uh, after that, I really want fishing. We've been talking about fishing for a long time. <laughs> And I just, I just really want to fish. Just have that extra thing to do in Crypto Raiders. Ah, so true. I love you. <laughs> That's so good. Go ahead, Nick. Yeah, Mike. for me, 
Yeah, for me, actually, I would love to see, because I don't know uh, how many of y'all, like, try to get people, like, your fellow gamers that are not really into crypto, into crypto raiders. Um, and the comment I get a lot, and I'm sure you've heard this comment before if you try to introduce it to anybody, um, is like, oh, my character doesn't move. Like, I'm not, I don't feel like I'm doing anything. I know we have abilities now and stuff like that, but I think the initial, like, first impression is like, okay, they click play, and then they're just not moving. So I think for me, personally, it would be Overworld. Um, after Unity, like, right away, Overworld, 100%. Because something about, like, you click, uh, like you log in, and your character pops into Portwin, Portwin and... Uh, and even like aesthetically everything being there right like duels could be uh, a location instance right like you could walk over to a coliseum and then click duel and then you enter the id just just that effort of like the overworld being there and you walking to the coliseum i think makes a big impression and makes it feel more like a game and then obviously we talked about this on council of elders but um walking to hogger like the instance walking to cc and uh, everything like that. Um, and then even fishing and stuff like that. And, and even think about this, like when they announce new stuff and you see like a construction TBD, like uh, kind of like in the works, like, oh, fishing is coming and you see a lake and it's currently like, I don't know, in development. And you're like, oh my God. And then when they announce it, like everyone ports into Port Wynn and like, walks over to the fishing and then when they launch it we're all just there you know like little stuff like that i think goes a long way that's why i feel and the auction house and trading and you know all that stuff i think the overworld is just it's just going to be such a big part of hype such a uh such a great uh first impression for new players i think that's the most important thing um and every feature you add could visually be seen because people are visual right like they they, they're very visual and they want to and the more interactive you are with what you're doing the more addicted and even though addicted is not a good word but like the more you engage with the content um anyway that's that's my spiel yeah so uh i agree with you that overworld is a high priority uh i don't think it's what they should work on immediately first uh to steal uh kind of sass's terminology for this stuff uh it's a I think the overworld is a very, very high lift project and something that will take a lot of time and effort and dev time and a lot of people to get done. Uh, I don't think it's something they can whip out in two or three months uh, realistically. So I think there's a lot of things that can be done very, very quickly with a few weeks of development and probably, you know, they talk about having two different teams, one that was for Phaser and one that was for Unity and so they'll be able to develop two different things in tandem once Unity is out. Uh, so I think the easy ones to just quickly knock out uh, and probably will get knocked out quickly are uh, expanding guilds. Um, and I know that if you take every single person in this call right now and listening uh, and add up all of their raider stake, we're less than 10% of some of the people that uh, have uh, raider staked. So there are some really, really big groups out there and really big individuals. And I know that... Uh, um, just from what Saz has said in Council of Elders and things like that, there are people talking to him and talking to the team about really uh, politely wanting to get guilds uh, expanded on. So I think uh, the fact that they're pushing for it and segments of the community are also pushing for it, I think guilds will be a top priority. Uh, and human versus human PvP and matchmaking rankings are both kind of going hand in hand, will probably be developed together um, within uh, as far as the PvP side goes. And I think that is a extremely high priority as well and something that I think literally has to be done. I think they gave themselves a, a bit of a timer on that one. I think it literally has to be done by the time they do the July million dollar tournament. I think they've kind of uh, given themselves a hard deadline on that because people will be super turned off if it's not human versus human PvP uh, by then. I don't think it'll go over very well. So I think uh, they've given themselves a deadline and that'll be a top priority alongside guilds. And then maybe look to work on act auction housing or auction house and uh, and the overworld after that. That's great, uh, Cheryl and Peter. You guys have any thoughts on 
Well, Sarah, I think you already mentioned your thoughts. Uh, Peter, do you have any thoughts on what uh, the priority should be once Unity Port drops? Nah, I think we've pretty much covered all of those. And uh, I think the team is also quietly building all the, the full aspects of the game. So I think we've been pretty much covered that. I don't really have extra thoughts on that. Great. Um, Lord D, I'm going to pitch to you one more time. Did you want to say anything or can you say anything? I don't know if your mic's working or not. Oh, it's possible that uh, they're on PC and you oh, can't yeah, really possible. Yeah. Twitter space. Yeah. That's probably why. Yeah, you can't do it on a PC, Lord D. You have to go on your mobile. I'm I am actually on my Hopefully PC. Hopefully they'll patch it in. There is actually a Are way you to really? Yeah, there's a way to do it yeah, on PC. Yeah, if you use uh, like blue stacks or something. Yeah, blue oh, stacks okay. if you They just... need to fix this, dude. I know, I know. I'll send you a link for it. It's really easy to set up. Um I think we could probably move into any questions from anybody listening then if anybody has anything they want to talk about. Yeah, absolutely. True. Anyone from the community want to ask a question? We've got some great minds here that could answer. Except Tina. We don't want questions from Tina. <laughs> oh, we love you, Tina. <laughs> All right. Well, with, uh, I'll give a couple more seconds here. But I will say um, that uh, for me, my priorities, uh, it's hard to argue against our overworld. But, you know, yeah, as Helvi said, there is going to be a lot of lift there. Um, so I expect them to probably expand upon guilds first uh, and then the PvP and matchmaking because, uh, again, that's a priority for the $1 million tournament. Um, and then um, yeah, and then probably overworld after the $1 million tournament. Uh, I mean, I could, see, I could see them working on overworld, you know, the infrastructure, and then dropping a trailer like on the first day of the $1 million tournament or the, the last day of the $1 million tournament because that would be like a huge like send-off for that tournament. So I could see that happening um, just to... Because that would, obviously there would already be a huge fever from the $1 million tournament uh, and then dropping Overworld and teasing that would, would probably be a great strategy. But um, yeah, I would... like I already, I already have a bunch of people, you know, messaging, like you said, Helvi. Um, like, what do I do with 100 Axie Scholars? Can I, can I bring them into the Crypto Raider universe? And do something with that like right now not, not really like uh, there's not it's really hard like you'd have to create 10 wallets yeah. for 100 scholars it just and tr trust me however many people are messaging you about it 20 times as many are messaging sass and Tyrion about yeah. it so yeah <laughs> they, uh, they know it's a they know it's an issue <laughs> and uh, yeah i mean i guess i'm ignorant to how hard it's it is to code all that but i just feel like maybe it's not that hard it seems like it's just a website thing but i don't know um Anyway, hey, we are at 601, guys. Uh, we like to keep these uh, Raiders of the Roundtable episodes to about one hour, no more. Uh, I appreciate everyone tuning in, checking out, asking questions. Next one will be in a couple weeks. Um, so I hope you all have a great rest of your, well, a great start to your week coming up here and, uh, and a great rating on Wednesday. Um, with that said, as always, have a great day. Have a great morning. Have a great night. God bless, and we will see you all next time. Peace.